We'll start with the prayers. Om Bhadram Karne Bhishruniyama Deva Bhadram Pashe Maksha Bhirya Jatraha Stirai Rangai Hi Stushtu Vagum Sashtanobihi Vyashema Deva Hi Tamyadayuho Swastina Indro Vridda Shravaha Swastina Pusha Vishwa Vedaha Swasti nastak shora rishta nemihi. Swasti no brihas patir dadato. Om shanti shanti shanti. We are studying the Adhyasa Bhashyam. of Shankaracharya, which is a very profound text written by him to defeat all his opponents during his time. So therefore, this has a very important significance in the study of Advaita Vedanta. Whether we study the Bhagavad Gita or the Brahma Sutra or the Upanishads, if you understand this 16 sections, you will find it very useful. The Upanishads teach us about our real nature as Atma. And the nature of this whole universe is Brahman. These are two significant words which are used repeatedly in the Upanishads. I am Atma Brahman. See, in Mandoki Upanishad, this, is, this comes about Atma and Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi, Brahdhanik Upanishad. So, in many of these texts, you will find these two terms and they both signify one entity which is called as the reality. Not knowing this reality is called as ignorance. And according to Vedanta, ignorance plays a very important role because it has a power. This ignorance we have learned in section nine last week. And the whole Adhyasa Bhashyam is based on this word ignorance, avidya. I do not know my real nature. Therefore, I have ignorance. Therefore, I take this body as me. This is how the logic goes. And the moment I come to know that I am the pure Atma, according to the scriptures, we will still be living in this world, but as a free bird as a Jeevan Mukta. If we don't have this knowledge, we are bound. We take ourselves to be the body and then whatever the body's conditions are, we take it as our own conditions. Similarly, the mind. Whatever the mind's condition is, sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's sad, Sometimes it is uh, lazy, and I say, I am lazy. So, Adhyasa is there throughout our life. That is one of the important things we have learned till now, from section 1 to 9. What we have learned is, Adhyasa is common 
it is universal adhyasa means taking something else as something else taking the shell as rope the as silver taking the rope as the snake taking myself as the body and mind instead of pure consciousness that is the gist of adhyasa and it is a it plays a very very crucial role in understanding and removing this knot of ignorance so with that small introduction let's just go straight to our topic today which is section 10 कथम पुनः अविद्यावद कथम पुनः अविद्यावद प्रत्यक्षादीनी प्रत्यक्षादीनी प्रमाणानी प्रमाणानी शास्त्राणी शास्त्राणी so in this section shankaracharya says how is that perception and other combinations including the scriptural injunctions pertain to the realm of ignorance see we can say that yes i am ignorant of something therefore i am making a mistake but then to say even the uh, activities connected with the shastra is based on ignorance that means our vyavahara of teaching and learning is also based on ignorance that's what he is trying to say how how is that everything is based on ignorance can you explain to me that is how shankaracharya presents this section katam punaha avidya avidyani vishayani pratyadini pramanani pramanam means it is an instrument and it gives knowledge how knowledge is found uh, founded on ignorance tell me that that is what his question is what kind of analysis are we doing we are saying we are saying our knowledge today is based on ignorance how is it possible now shankaracharya explains that whole methodology of how we should understand ignorance pramanam there are six schools of pramana there are six uh, instruments of knowledge pratyaksha we all know pratyaksha means eyes ears nose tongue skin all the five sense organs are the basic fundamental instrument of knowledge for all of us and that is called as indriyas the instruments which cognize the world then there is anumana which is inference upamana means similarity something is similar to something therefore we say this is therefore we say this is this is what it is we have gone through this six schools six uh, uh pramanams before in one of our sessions so i won't expand on this but just to explain in this context arthapatti means postulation i postulate that there is there was rain in the night when i see a wet <coughs> road in the morning anupalabdhi means absence of a thing i don't see something therefore i conclude something so even with the absence of something it is a pramana 
The last one is the most important, which is called a Shabda Pramanam. Many a times, we do not see with our eyes, like the TV news, which tells us that something is happening out maybe thousands of miles away. My eyes are not directly seeing it, but I hear the news. I read the newspaper. That's all Shabda. So as long as it is from a trustworthy source, whether it is Laukika or Shastriya, that means whether it is for the uh, uh, transactional world or for the, for the uh, transcendental world, that means what lies beyond this world. For both this, the words of the scriptures are very, very important and they serve as an important means of knowledge. In Advaita Vedanta, we take, we give primary importance to the words of the scriptures. Suppose the scriptures tell us, I am Atma. Without any proof, we say, okay, I accept I am Atma, and then I begin the inquiry. How am I Atma? How I am not the mind? How I am not the body? And so on. We don't use logic first. There are many uh, uh, logicians, the Tarkikas, who say logic, reasoning, they put as first. Sankhya, Yoga, Nyaya, these are all schools which depend totally on logic. Now, they do not take, for them, the Shastra, the scriptures are secondary. And they try to understand the truth just by pure reasoning. And they say that reasoning should collaborate with what? Shastra should collaborate with the reason. And then they reach a dead end. They are not able to understand that there lies something which beyond reason. It exists, but they do not understand the limitation of logic. Now, the sources we have seen, Shabda from Shastra, they give us direct knowledge by mere presence. The self-knowledge which we get, I am Atma Brahman. I am pure consciousness. This is a direct knowledge given by the scriptures. And the object is here and now. We can contact it, we can know it, if we know the methodology. Then there is Shabda which tells us there are 14 lokas. I have given the names here, Buhu, Buvaha, Suvaha, Mahaha, Janaha, Tapaha, Satya. These are the seven upper lokas. Atala, Bitala, Sutala, Talatala, Rasatala, Mahatala, Patala. These are the seven lower lokas. According to the scriptures, all these 14 lokas exist. There are beings in these lokas and they are either happy or sorrowful. This is how the Shastra presents the entire world. There is consciousness, there is pure Atma, which is a direct knowledge, and there are worlds in which human beings live. And both this is coming from the Veda. Veda is through words. Through words, we get this knowledge. Pratyaksha Adinim Pramanam. Pratyaksha has got two meanings. One is the normal Sanskrit meaning, which means Aparoksha Atma, direct I. That is one of the meanings of Pratyaksha. The second meaning is 
what is known through the sense organs. Aksha, Aksha means Prati Aksha. Aksha means eyes. Eyes are a representative of the sense organs. Whatever we learn through Anumana, Upamana, Arthapatti, Anupalabdi, all those other five schools, they are all coming under, they are also called as Pratyaksha. Avidya Vatu, like Dhana Vatu, see, they all pertain to the realm of ignorant person who is using a pramanam to know the self. That is why we say this a person who is trying, an individual, you and me, we are individuals, we are all ignorant about our real nature as the pure Chaitanya. That is our starting point. That is how the Shastras, they begin. They say we are all ignorant. Only Shastra is Pramanam, the source to reveal the self. It's not the senses or mind or laukika shabda. Our sense organs do not have the power to reveal consciousness. Our mind does not have. The only pramanam which can be used is shastra pramanam. And to use this pramanam, I have to be first ignorant. Suppose I say I'm already knowing the Shastra, then it is not serving as an instrument of knowledge. Suppose you become wise man, then it is not an instrument of knowledge for you. You already are that Atma. But 99.9% .9 of all of us are ignorant about ourselves. And therefore, they, they say, Shastra says, Shankaracharya says, self-ignorance is the basis for all knowledge. I don't know something, therefore I put effort to know something. I don't know my pure nature as a Chidan and the Swarupa, the ever-existing principle, changeless principle. I exist without the body, mind and intellect and the world. This is a very important sentence. Very difficult to accept that there is something like this. I am of the nature of satyam, pure existence and pure consciousness. And this pure consciousness is an independent entity. Therefore, I can say freedom, moksha is my nature. Nature means what? I am always that pure self. But in the waking state, I take myself as the body and the mind, which is adhyasa, which is a superimposition. The body's nature is to be to get born and then perish. Get born and perish. It is made up of five elements and on a specific day, in time it is born, in time it is lost. But Atma is not in time, it is not in space, it is beyond time and space. It includes time and space. You see, this is a very unique thing of Atma. Whenever we try to understand the scriptural, the scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita, you should know there are two things. First of all, you should know that what is this Atma? What is this Brahman? So our focus should be to know the nature of Atma. Then the second focus of the study should be, how can I realize that Atma? That is how study should be done. It should not be an academic study. This is not a physics, chemistry, or mathematics, or medicine, or law, where you can use a particular knowledge to make money. This is not to make money. It is something about my nature. It is something about the nature of the world. 
So I have to apply whatever I learn. So especially in this Adhyasa Bhashyam, each one of you should ask this question, am I taking this body as me? Am I taking the mind as me? And what is this Shastra telling me? Bhagavad Gita tells me, na jayate na va kadachit. I am not born, I do not die. That is what the Bhagavad Gita teaches me. So if I am taking I to be the body, I am making a mistake. The Bhagavad Gita or the Upanishads is telling me, I am not the body, I am the consciousness. So this is how the vichara, the inquiry should go. So this ignorance of the self is removed by knowledge. And it is also called as Vyavaharika Satyam. What is Vyavaharika Satyam? The ignorance is Vyavaharika Satyam. What is the confusion? First of all, I have to be ignorant to be in Vyavahara. Then I will use the pramanam, I will use the instruments of knowledge. When I use the instead of instruments of knowledge, I will have desire. These are all the steps by which I keep falling down and down and down. This is what we are analyzing and we are having a deeper understanding of this ignorance. So when I don't know I am the pure consciousness, I take the body and then I start having a desire. Then the Shastra says, don't desire this, but desire this. Do this, don't do this. So Shastra is for the ignorant person. And then what happens? I want to gain moksha, gain freedom from this wrong identification. It is also in the, in the realm of ignorance. Now this is how Shankaracharya presents this section, the 10th section. Basically, what the 10th section is saying is that this ignorance is a very universal phenomena and all of us, whether we like it or not, have this error in us. Now, let us go to the 11th section. 11th section Uchate Uchate Dehendriya de Shoe Dehendriya de Shoe Aham Mama Aham Mama Abhimana Rahitasya Abhimana Rahitasya Pramatritwan Upapatau Pramatritvan upapattau, Pramana pravrityan upapatte, Pramana pravrityan upapatte, Nahi, Nahi, Indriyani, Indriyani, Anupadaya, Anupadaya, Pratyaksha divya vahara Pratyaksha divya vahara Sambhavati Sambhavati Nacha Nacha Adhishtana mantarena Adhishtana mantarena Indriyanam Indriyanam Vyavaharaha Vyavaharaha Sambhavati Sambhavati Nacha Nacha 
ಅನಧ್ಯಸ್ತಾತ್ಮಭಾವೇನಧ್ಯಸ್ತಾತ್ಮಭಾವೇನಧ್ಯಸ್ತಾತ್ಮಭಾವೇನಧ್ಯಸ
unless a person identifies with the body, the indriyas, the mind, he cannot become a knower. This is the most important point we should understand in Adhyasa Bhashya. Suppose I say I am a knower of this body. I know my body, I know this world. That is where the starting point of superimposition is. Because error is happening in, the, in, this, particular, in this particular context. The moment I wake up in the morning, I say I am the body and I start my transactions. That is the Jiva Bhava. Through the Shastra, I get Brahma Bhava. I am the pure consciousness. I forget I am pure consciousness and I am putting on the shoes of ignorance into the world and I start my activities. Whether it is Yajna I do, whether it is Shastric study I do, whether it is Laukika Vyavahara I do, like going to school, working up, earning money, uh, going shopping, all that is all in the field of ignorance, of self. We may be very knowledgeable from the worldly point of view. You may have got two PhDs, three PhDs. But is, that is from the worldly point of view, with reference to the external world, you have got some qualifications and you have specialized in some area. Here we are not talking of the objective science. Here we are talking of the subject. Aham. All of us, we say aham, aham, aham. All of us. I, I, I. Without that I, there is, you cannot start a transaction. This is what Shankaracharya starts saying. Is he, this is his starting point. He says, please understand your starting point. Your starting point is in ignorance. Function of an individual is to know, to desire, and to act. The moment you identify with the body, the, you want to know, you want to desire, and you act. That's all. These are the only three things which all of us do. Whether you live in London, whether you live in America, whether you live in Singapore or India, wherever you live. Janati, Ichati, Yatati. To go beyond the desire, I have to be an individual jiva first. I have to be an ignorant first. To know something, I have to be ignorant. I can't help it. So wanting to know the notion of ignorance is a primary problem. This starts because of the adhyasa, superimposition of the pure self on the mind. The self is pure. If I come to know this, then I'm free. But not knowing this, I take this I, which is in the mind as me. That I in the mind is called as ego I, pramata I. Remember this term, pramata, knower I. As long as there is I, everything is. As long as there is this notion of I-ness in this body, I am an individual. I experience the world. The moment this I goes away in sleep state, I am no longer a pramata. I am the sakshi, the pure atma. This is a revision which I have written just to summarize section 9, which I don't want to go through at this stage because I have covered this revision. 
in the beginning. But only one or two things which I want to say. In Chandogya Upanishad, the description of Atma is Yovai Puma Tatsukam. Very, very important section, which, which is the definition of Atma. Like I said, before the superimposition happens, before, while we are in the sleep state, who am I? I am called Bhuma. That is the name given to me without identifications with the body. Yovai Bhuma Tat Sukham Na Alpe Sukham Asti. Very important sentence from Chandogya Upanishad. That which is infinite, which is beyond the body and mind and time and space, is the only source of happiness. Very important point you should note down in your diary. If you, you know, especially when you are studying the Upanishads, I recommend all of you to keep a small diary and write down the important definitions of Atma. This is one of the important definitions appearing in chapter 7, mantra, uh, section 23, the verse number 1. First of all, what you should do is just write the uh, reference number of the Upanishads. Then you can always pull it out from the web, from the web or from my notes. In Vedanta website, you have all the definitions of Atma, all. All the Upanishadic definitions are there. And that is what I normally broadcast also in the daily uh, broadcast, which I do. Not the divine quotes, but the other broadcast. So, Yovai Bhuma Tatsukam gives me the definition of who I am. And this is what Narada asked San, uh, Sanat Kumara, the Guru. Narada went to the Guru. Narada had a PhD in about 26 topics. Right from astronomy to palmistry to physics to chemistry, all you can see the whole list in chapter 7. He gives the full list. I have a PhD in this, PhD in this, PhD in this. But my problem is only one. I'm still not happy. I still have sorrow. Why? In spite of so much of knowledge of the world, I'm still unhappy. And then the Guru teaches him, Yovai Bhuma Tat Sukham Nal Pe Sukham Asti. In the finite world, there is no happiness. Happiness exists as your nature. Understand your nature to be happiness, then you have all the knowledge which you need in the world. So this is this. So why I'm presenting this is because this is where the truth is. Not knowing this truth is ignorance. We fall down from our nature to this body identification. It we go through the prarab, the karma of the body and the mind. As long as we know it is a prarat, the karma which is acting, and I am not this, then I am free. Then the second definition of Atma or this Brahman is Yatra Nanyat Pashati, Nanyat Shrunoti, Nanyat Vijanati, Sabhuma. What is this infinite nature, Atma or Brahman? It is that in which there is one sees nothing else, one hears nothing else, and one knows nothing else. Very, very important definition. Keep this always in mind. You may not understand it first time when you hear it, but it is very useful. Whenever you want to know your nature, bring out this and then try to 
reflect on this. You are 100% guaranteed to reach yourself. The mind, if it gets trained to know this infinite nature, it can never forget it because it has tasted it. All of us experience this. Only thing is, I don't know that that is my real nature and I take this body and mind as the nature of mind. This is the superimposition. This is the starting point. And then the whole exercise of I am a mother, I am a father, I am a, I am a businessman, I am uh, I am knowledgeable, I am ignorant. All that whole cycle starts. So nothing is seen, nothing is heard, or thought in the infinite Atma. That self is the seer, perceiver, feeler, and thinker. That pure consciousness without this world is the truth. But it appears as this world. It again goes back to its nature. That is why it is called as non-dual, advaitam. This is where we, if we understand advaitam, the word advaitam, we get freedom automatically because it means freedom. It means moksha. Shastra has got two sections, karma kanda and jnana kanda. And do's and don'ts are there in the karma kanda. And beyond the do's and don'ts is the jnana kanda. That means the knowledge section. There is no karma or upasana involved in jnanam. Jnanam means it is a knowledge of what exists. What exists is pure sat and pure chit. Pure consciousness, pure existence, it exists by itself. It is self-luminous. That is knowledge given by the Upanishads. In the 10th section, the question is raised, what are the means of knowledge? And can the means, can I use the means to know the self? The laukika world is seen, experienced by the senses. The shastras talk about the 14 lokas, which we have seen, but all that is in the realm of ignorance. There is a shastrik shabda, which deals with the self, that is called as jnana kanda. And it is that jnana kanda, which we study in the Upanishads, which teaches me bhuma, which teaches me atma, Aham Brahma Asmi, all that is in the Jnana Kanda portion. There is a text which is called as Manamala, which deals with the six Pramanams. Which, uh, there is also a text called as uh, Tarka Sangraha, which deals with the six Pramanams, you know, with these six sources of knowledge. Like in a dream, we are rooted in ignorance about the waker. And then something happens like a lion roars in a dream. And then we wake up to our nature of bakerhood. Similarly, the Vedanta lion roars up and wakes us up from the dream of the waking state. I wake up to the Atma Jnanam the pure consciousness, which we now studied as Bhuma. So the Moksha Shastra also, also pertains to the realm of ignorance because I think I am bound, I get the knowledge, I am free. But both ignorance and knowledge are in the field of the transactions. 
the meaning of the se 11th section is Uchate. Uchate means it's perfectly logical. Deha Indriya Dishu. With reference to the Upadis, the person who is knowing is me, the individual, the knower I, the ego I. The ego I is the person behind the knowledge of the body. Aham mama abhimana rahitasya. But there is another I, which is without the I and the mind. That is called a sakshi I. Before you use the body and mind and the senses, who are you? You are the sakshi. That sakshi exists in paramarthika avastha. Paramarthika means it is in a higher plane, absolute plane like super waker status. In the realm of Vyavahara, in the realm of transactions, the ego I is dominant. It is identified with the gross body. It is identified with the senses, mind and the intellect. When the ego I identifies with the senses, you become the perceiver. I see, I hear, I touch, I smell, I taste. This is all the sense organs. So the I in identifying with the sense organs becomes the perceiver. It is a false I. It is not the Sakshi I. The I, when it is in identified with the mind, feels the hurt. She hurted me. Somebody troubled me. I am feeling the pain. I feel sorrow in my life. These are all identification with the mind, the feeler in us, emotions. I understand, I don't understand Adhyasa Bhashyam. I understand Adhyasa Bhashyam. It's so easy, so well explained by Shankaracharya. This is identification with the intellect instrument in this body, connected to this body. So all actions of the human being is in identification with the body, mind, or intellect. Through the body, mind, and intellect, we contact the world of objects, emotions, and thoughts. This is what beautifully depicted by Swami Chinmayananda in the BMI chart. Just try to remember that chart. I have taken that before. This is what the essence of that. So in the BMI chart, you should know very well that pure I Om is without any adhyasa. That is what is Atman. Be be below that is all the vasanas, V. And below the V comes the BMI. And below the BMI comes the PFT and OET. So identification with the Upadis makes me a knower, Janati. And then knowing precedes Ichati. And Ichati precedes Yatate. Yatate means I put, I put effort. So I become a knower first, Pramata. I use the pramanam and I start desiring. Then I use the organs of action. I start acting in the world to fulfill my desires. So the entire transactional field is being explained in this 11th section. Very, very detailed verse section, which gives the entire logic, the process of the transactions in the entire world. And how it all happens because of superimposition, adhyasa, is also explained here. 
for one who has not identified with the body and the senses, which are the upadhis, the medium, he is free. He is a mukta purusha. Pramatrutva anupapattau, the sense of ownership being absent in a person. Pramana pravarti anupapattehe, there can't be any nourship or transactions or epistemological behavior of seeing, hearing, thinking for a person who is not identified with the body. Nahi indriyani upapadye pratyakshadi vyavahara sambhavati. No seeing, hearing without taking senses body as me, aham or my mama. So the whole superimposition which happens is aham and mama. I in the body, I in the mind. And through this I in the body and mind, I take the objects of the world as mine, mama. The relations as mine. Identifying with the Bahya Indriyas, the external sense organs, I and my come together, perceptions take place through the Pratyaksha Pramanam, through the sense organs, I come to have the experiences of the world. Don't forget, the topic is Adhyasa, superimposition, identification, wrong identification. Antar Indriyam, identifying with my internal organs, which are mind, intellect, memory. I take ego, I take six other pramanams, and I use Anumana, Upamana, Arthapatti, Anupalabdi, and also commit the same mistake. So whether I use the Pratyaksha or the other instruments of knowledge, all of them I am using it and I am using them in ignorance of my real nature. Nachadishthana matrena indriyana vivahara sambhavati. I can't take out eyes, mind separately and see like telescope and microscope. Indriyas are based on the adhishthanam, which is the body. Nacha anadhyasta atma bhavena dehena kashit vyapriyate. These are all sentences in this section. I am explaining word by word. So here I take myself as indriyas and body. I say I am going there. I hear. I see. I am here, I am there. All these are all with reference to the body. Identification in the body. We function as the body mind complex with the sense of I in them. Without the Atma Bhava, the sense of I in the body is called as superimposition. And without this, uh, if I don't have this superimposition, there will be no transactions. Nacha etasmin sarvasmin asati. Without I coming into the senses, I can't be the perceiver, feeler, thinker. This is a central point Shankaracharya wants to drive in this section. Identification with the body. Nacha etasmin sarvasmin asati asangasya atmanaha paramatrutakvam anupapadyate. Atma is what? Pure. Asangaha. Asanga means relationless. It is not at all connected with the body. Like we all experience it in our sleep. When the mind has gone to sleep, who am I? I am the Sakshi. I. Do I have the? Uh, do I have any perception of the world? No. Do I have the person of the body? No. Do I feel very so uh, Do I feel sorrow when I'm sleeping? No. Who am I? I am the pure consciousness. I am the pure existence. 
and it is beyond time and space. That is why it is called as anantaha or anandaha. So, pramata, the moment you say, I am a knower, it is always with identification. Without pramata, there is no pramana, prameya, vyavahara. Pramanam means instrument. Prameyam means the objects of knowledge. There is no connection of the objects, that means the sense objects, without the sense organs and without the knower pramata. The knower is the hero here. The knower is the ego I, which is a shadow of the real consciousness, the sakshi. Nacha pramatrutvam antarena pramana pravarti asti. No vyavahara as jivan mukta. No epistemological functions without the eye notion in the body. Epistemological functions means seeing, hearing, tasting and all that. Tasmat avidyavad vishayan eva pratyakshadini pramanani shastrani cha. So, what Shankaracharya then says, therefore, we are all the first knowers, identified the I with the body, that is due to avidya, due to ignorance of my real nature as Sakshi. My car, my body, my wealth, all this becomes mine, mine, mine. Nobody listens to a class as a Param Brahma. If I am a pure Brahman, pure consciousness, there is no hearing taking place. I close my eyes, I am pure eye. There is no more hearing, there is no more seeing. I am the pure Atma, I can remain like that. That is the nature. To listen to Moksha Shastra, you have to be a Pramata, the individual, a knower. Individual means pramata, karta, pokta. Pramata means identified with the body and mind, perceiver, feeler, thinker. He, the perceiver, feeler, thinkers uses the pramanam, the instruments, to experience the pramayam, the objects, and gain knowledge, which is called as prameti. This is the whole life history of each one of us being a pramata, being an individual. That is the first thing we should know. I may be a doctor, lawyer. These are all specific nature of knowledge we gather. I am a computer engineer. I am a, uh, I'm expert in zoology, physiology. I mean, I'm so many functions, so many different sciences exist. But those are all specific. But ultimately, all these are what pramata. I become a karta when I am doing, uh, I, when I, that pramata, identifies with the organs of action. And I become a bhokta, the enjoyer, when I am identified with the organs of knowledge. In I, my, my individuality is established. This is a very, important section where simplicity and profundity are both mixed together. This is the beauty of Shankaracharya. Very simple Sanskrit words he uses to give us the profound nature of this adhyasa. Whole life is based on this ignorance of the self, which is the Atma. The fact is, without the ignorance, there is no individuality, which is the pramata, knower. Without pramata, there is no pramana, prameya, vevahara. The, 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 the type of source of knowledge we use here is called as arthapatti. You know, in one of the six sources of knowledge we use, we said arthapati. Arthapati, I gave the example of it rained, therefore uh, I see 
the roads are wet. So what it means is, if that was not there, this would not have been there. That was not there means what? If that person, when that, uh, when that ignorance is not there, then I will not be acting in this world as the Pramata. Another example they uh, give is for uh, Arthapati is, uh, this is a Shastrik example. This, they say that a person is not eating during the day. But he is not slim. He is very fat. So what is Arthapati? What is the postulation? He is eating at night. So similarly, when we use, when we see a person acting, the arthapati, the, 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 the logic which is used is, he's acting because he doesn't know his self. If a person is not pramata, how pramana vyabhara can happen? Therefore, he is ignorant of his nature. Pramana pravarti helps me to postulate pramata avidyavan. Because I see people acting, I can postulate that they are all in ignorance. The knowledge of the Triputi, Triputi means Pramata Pramanam Pramayam, Karta Karanam Karyam, Bhogta Bhogarana Bhogyam. These are all identifications with either the Indriyas or with the organs of actions or with both of them. The identifications can be with the gross body. That's what the charvakas, materialistic people, what do they say? The world, there is nothing else except the world. We are all born to enjoy this world. And then therefore I will enjoy and then leave. That's it. There is nothing more than this. That is what is identification with only the gross body. They don't know that there is a traveling mind, which the Imam Sakas, they say, the jiva is not the gross body. The jiva goes to different lokas. He goes to Swarga Loka. Therefore, you do all the rituals. Nyaya and Vaiseshika, they believe in a traveling mind. It is the Advaitim alone who believes in pure consciousness, which is the substratum of the body, mind, and the world. It is ever free. There is no travel involved. The whole world is appearance in that Atma. Therefore, it is Advaitam. Advaitam means there is no plurality. There is no duality. There is only one non-dual existence, consciousness, bliss. So this is the section number 11. In the next section, we are going to see an example. Shankaracharya is going to use and explain what we have discussed as the Pramata, Pramana, Prameya, Vyavahara. In this section number 12, he is going to say, you do a, an examination of the world. Of all the animals, how do they interact and how they live? You do an examination of all the human beings. How do they live? And he gives, he gives a guarantee that what I have said is what you will see. In the section number 11, what I have said, the entire transactions are done by wrong identification with the body, mind, intellect. Whether you are, it is in the, in, the, in the case of animals or human beings, you will find it is the same process. The animals have a sense of insecurity because they don't know the reality. That finishes section 11, a very important section after the definition of superimposition. 
the this particular section number 12 is very very critical and uh, very very important section try to uh, try to make sure that you have understood what is adhyasa these are all very very deep um, analysis of the entire uh, entire world what we see and experience so section 3 gave us the, section 3 gave us the definition of what is superimposition it is in a different locus it is smriti rupaha it is purva drashta avabhasaha that, that section number 3 then section number 11 these two don't miss in the 16 sections of adhyasa out of 16 sections these two are fundamental sections now let's go to the 12th section paschadivihi cha viseshat paschadivihi cha viseshat yathahi pashvadayah yathahi pashvadayah Shabdadibihi, Shabdadibihi, Shrotradinam, Shrotradinam, Sambandhe Sati, Sambandhe Sati, Shabdadi Vignane, Shabdadi Vignane, Pratikule, Pratikule. Jate tato nivatante, Jate tato nivatante, Anukule, Anukule, Chapravartante, Chapravartante, Yatha dando dietakaram, Yatha dando dietakaram, Purusham, Purusham. Abhimukham, Abhimukham, Upalabhya, Upalabhya, Mam Hantum Ayam Ichati, Mam Hantum Ayam Ichati, Iti, Iti, Palayitum, Palayitum, Arabhante, Arabhante, Harita. Truna purna panim Harita truna purna panim Opalabhya Opalabhya Tam prati abhimuki bhavanti Tam prati abhimuki bhavanti Evam, Evam, Purusha api, Purusha api, Yutpanna chitta, Yutpanna chitta, Krura drishtin, Krura drishtin, Akro shatha, Akro shatha, Kango karan. Kango get a karan Balavataha Balavataha Upalabhya Upalabhya Tato nivatante Tato nivatante Tad viparitan Tad viparitan Prati pravartante Prati pravartante Ataha samana her Ataha samana her Pashwa di bihi Pashwa di bihi Purushanam Purushanam Pramana prameya vyavahara her Pramana prameya vyavahara her Pashwa di nam Chaprasitaha Chaprasitaha Aviveka Pura Sadaha Aviveka Pura Sadaha 
प्रत्यक्षा दिव्यवहार प्रत्यक्षा दिव्यवहार तत्सर्शना तत्सर्शना व्युत्पत्तिमता व्युत्पत्तिमता अषाण अषाण प्रत्यक्षादी प्रत्यक्षादी व्यवहार व्यवहार तत्काल तत्काल सीयते निश्चीयते so i have already explained to you the gist of this mantra this section the gist is as follows it gives us the behavior of the animals it gives us the behavior of the human beings and it tells us if you watch the behavior of the animals and the human beings they all follow the same process of pramata pramanam prameyam and because of the likes and dislikes in the human beings and in the animals you will see them going towards certain things or away from certain things in the case of animals you give them a food they will come near you if you show them a stick they will go away from you similarly in the case of human beings you give them objects with reference to their likes raga then it will be pravritti marga you will keep on expanding if you want to if you go if you uh, if you see its behavior which is against their likes then it will be nivritti marga it will be withdrawal so in a sense because of non discrimination of the pure nature of consciousness with reference to the body mind and intellect this whole vyavahara is taking place that is the essence of this section what is the story a story of animals and human beings hey do now in this uh section it can be explained in the in the in that in the way of uh how the tarkikas they see the world also how the logic the logic uh, the logicians they see interactions happening in the world so towards the end i will give you the logic uh, methodology also which is tarka method hey to uh samanda and all that okay so paschadivishya avishesha all human beings are ignorant they have taken themselves to be the upadhi upadhi means the medium transaction without the medium i am atma and what is this atma's definition atma is the same as brahman and what is brahman brahman is the jagat karanam the cause of the entire universe so the self is nothing but it is the cause of the entire universe that is the mahavakya which we will study in the upanishads the the epistemological behavior which is the pramana pravritti is identical in animals and human it doesn't mean that we also bark like a dog or mew like a cat it means that the pramana prameya vyavahara is similar it is different it is non different avishesha means non different life of a creature creature here means animals birds reptiles and so on they also have sparsha roopa rasaganda pramanam is shrotra indriyam or any indriyam prameyam is for example shabda 
when they are connected, knowledge happens. And the knowledge can be conducive or not conducive. Conducive means anukula and non-conducive means pratikula. If the knowledge is giving to, given to me is conducive, I go towards that knowledge. If it is pratikula, I go away from the knowledge. The example is given of the cow with two behaviors. When a cow, when a man with handful of grass uh, goes towards a cow, the cow likes him. So it is pravrti. It means you go after. Suppose a man goes with a stick. The cow knows he is coming to beat me. So it will run away from him. The human beings also, the wise and the learned, the suited and the booted with purpose in life, they want to change the cosmos. Kura drashtin means anger in their eyes. If they, if they shout, nobody will be near them. It is like going with a sword in hand. So the two behaviors of human being is also pravrti and nivrti. Pravrti means when a person comes with a garland to garland you, you like it. So you go after such behaviors, after such transactions. Suppose you, uh, you, you have annoying people who make you angry, you will run away from them. So what is the conclusion between the two examples, between the animals and the human, the two behaviors of the body, identified animal and the identified human beings, they behave exactly in the same way. It is universally accepted, well-known fact that animals have notions of being in their body. Animals and human beings don't know they are Satchidananda Atma, take themselves to be the body. Therefore, Janati Ichati Yatate is the basis of the entire life of a Aviveka. Aviveka means non discriminate person. Whether it be an animal, whether it is human being, we are all, we do not live life with discrimination. With correct understanding, I am the pure self. I am the consciousness. The animal's notion of selfhood is in the body. The same thing is there with the human beings also. Therefore, we all suffer. That is what Shankaracharya wants to bring out in this beautiful example. In the 11th verse, he gives us the process, pramata pramanam prameyam. This is the whole triputi by which Identification takes place with the body and our vyavahara takes place. Since there is similarity, even for a human being, vyavahara is happening like animals which are identified with the body. The body suffer, suffers from lack of discrimination between atma and anatma. Therefore, we are rooted in ignorance and then we suffer, we get into the process of janati, ichati, and yatati. Whereas if you know atma and say, I am the pure atma, pure being, that is predominant in your life, it is possible. To have the predominance, Brahma Bhava is predominant in a jnani's life. We see jnanis in life, there are people, wise people, living in the world today as jnanis, learned people who know the Upanishad. We see several Swamiji's. They are all wise people who know, who have done this discrimination. They don't have Jiva Bhava, they have Atma Bhava, Brahma Bhava. They are rooted in Jnanam. So Jnanam is predominant. Ignorance is gone. Therefore, you are free. If ignorance is the foundation, then you are a prabhata using pramanam and having prameya vyavahara. 
ignorance is the foundation of the vyavahara it is based on likes and dislikes and our whole life resolves revolves around it avidya kama karma munda upanishad tells this cycle very very beautifully very very same topic avidya this superimposition this cycle which i have explained to you here in this chart munda upanishad clearly says the same thing as avidya kama karma ignorance desire action so i accept i am ignorant now so section 12 is constructed by logic by anumana vakya statement of inference i will tell you in short the five steps which are used in logic tarka shastra pratigna hetu udaharana upanayana upanaya nigamana these are the five steps see this is just a logical way to say what we have said so far in section 12 it is the same just to explain pratigna means purusha avidya vantaha what is to be established that is what is called as uh, uh, pratigna vakyam see this is a pure tarka section yeah if you if you don't understand this doesn't matter this is just to give for people who are want to know the logical method of understanding this uh, uh, our uh, transactions for them this will be useful for example mountain has caught up fire parvato vanniman we don't see the fire but we infer fire how by hetu hetu means the cause because the mountain has smoke where i saw the fire before there was smoke in a kitchen so the udharana means example yatha mahanasah like you see the fire and smoke in a large kitchen in a village we derive a vyapti generalization generalization is called as invariable concomitance this means that also will be there if i see smoke fire will also be there yatra yatra dumaha tatra tatra vannihi wherever smoke is seen there is fire that is the vyapti generalization then the fourth step is we bring the vyapti understanding to the smoke in the mountain vanni vyapya dhuman ayam parvataha this mountain has smoke which has invariable concomitance with fire therefore what is the conclusion this mountain is on fire this is a step by step logical process happening what happens in your mind but it happens in a split second not like this it takes us a few minutes to understand the five steps but in the mind it happens in a split second and that is what is called as inferen inferential knowledge so the five steps are you apply now to the teaching pratigna is what what is the what is the uh, basis all of us are possessed of ignorance and what is the hetu what do we see we see the interactions between pramata pramanam and prameyam what is the udharana udharana means example like the animals like the animals are identified with the body the human is also a doer who is identified with the body and whoever is identified with the body is called as avidyavan he is ignorant person and what is the upanaya upanaya means avidya vyapya what is the generalization vyavahara is based on ignorance people with vyavahara or transactions have avidya so 
wherever you see people acting, you must know they are ignorant. Inference is used by Nyaya and Advaitam. In the five steps, that is a Nyaya method. It can be converted to three steps also. Normally, it is converted to three steps. We say mountain has fire because it has smoke, like fire in the kitchen. And then we stop there. Similarly, we say um, in, the, in Advaitam also, we see people are ignorant. They are acting. Because they are ignorant, we see them acting with their as a pramatha. This is the same what I have explained to you now. We all have aviveka and it is the cause of samsara. It is the cause of suffering. So you can see the whole Adhyasa Bhashyam superimposition is explained by Shankaracharya to, for us to come out of sorrow using the Upanishads. The individuality is based on ignorance, individuality, yeah? pramata, knowing oneself to be this body, the I notion. Then the desiring happens, raga and dvesha, and which leads to oh, action. Avidya kama karma, that is the inferred foundation which is shown here. Pravarti nivrti udasi naha. This we have seen. Pravarti means I run after like things I like, I go away from things which I dislike, and then I am neither liking or disliking, non nonchalance means I remain neutral. In all pramana, pramaya, vivahara, ignorance creeps in. Animals and human, they behave in the same way. The three identifications are as the body taken by charvakas, as the jiva taken by the ritualists who believe that there will be future conditions of birth in the heaven or as jnanis. The jnani is the best because he doesn't have any identification. He only says, I am Atma. That is the gist of this section number 12. We have four more sections to go. The last two sections are very easy. 13, 14, we will see. 13 section is very important again. Sure. And uh, uh, we will see this next week. Hopefully, we'll complete this in about three, sections, three more talks. After that, we will start the Upanishadic uh, sessions. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnaha Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamataya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om I don't see any questions on the chat box. So if you have any questions, you can directly ask them. You can unmute yourself and uh, you can ask whatever questions you have. Shigaji. Uh, yeah, Baboy. Uh, we are discussing between animals and men, right? Regarding yes, the, yes. The but uh, you see, by being human, we can study sasra or whatever. Yes. But how the animals can say that I'm not a body? No, they you see, yeah, yeah. Body, you yeah. See, no, no, animals cannot do that. Animals, what we are saying is, in the, in the normal behavior which we see in the world, it, we are as good as animals. We also have, uh, we also use our eyes, ears, and then we act in the world. The animals also use their eyes, ears, and then they have the desires, uh, and then they act based on their desires. We also are human beings. We also act in the same way. That is what is the example. Mm -hmm. But 
what we have to remember is what shankaracharya says is animals cannot have moksha animals cannot have freedom from identification human beings by the study of scriptures can mm. have can drop the identification and say i am free i am not the body the body is born due to prarabdha karma but i am not the body i am separate from the body i am atma the upanishads will teach me what is the nature of this atma how can it exist independently without the body the upanishads will teach me that that is the job of the upanishads here shankaracharya says that we all are suffering from an error of identifying with this body as me he says drop this identification once and for all you have understood adhyasa bhashyam let the body do a body you cannot stop body tomorrow morning will get up and start acting even after the class it will start acting you'll go for a dinner you'll go for a walk maybe you'll go and see a tv all this will happen let it happen but it should not disturb me you see that is the that is the advantage of a human being that is why vivek chudamani they say that the human being you are born as a human being so you have done a lot of punyam in your life you have done a lot of merit with a lot of merit you have got this you have earned this body of a human being come and study the shastra and re, uh, become free mm. come and study the shastra and, and just let the shastra run through you mm. this is what uh, has been said by vijay here manushyatvam there is very significant portion which is said in vivek chudamani jeevan mukti is possible only for a human being we need to apply our buddhi to remove this superimposition very beautifully said by vijay here so that means that means to say animal uh, after that there is no rebirth or what no no no, no. Other no, animals, no 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 uh, animals will surely no no animals will surely have rebirth sure 100% hmm. human beings may not have rebirth but animals will definitely animals have come into the world as bhokta they have come only to have enjoyment in this world and leave the world they are only bhoktas they just come they they all instinctive they don't have a karta attitude mm. they don't have that i am doer but they know that they are enjoyers this is the way shastra describes the animals whereas what whereas what we do we say i am a karta and a bhokta karta means i am the doer that is where the problem lies Mm -hmm. See, we as a body, we do uh, what what we should remember is very clear. It's mm -hmm. with the help of a body, actions happen. Okay, what we should say is actions are going on in this world as per the cosmic law of prarabdha karma. But I am the witness of the body. if you stop with that you are a free person mm. but, i am a witness okay it may not be easy mm. but this is what shastra the scriptures are teaching me but, don't get confused with any experience which can happen in life any mental experience any or any experience in meditation i saw that i see this all that is anatma i am a witness i am a pure consciousness in this consciousness the definition is bhuma there is nothing 
no hearing takes place no seeing takes place all alone it is alone in itself at the same time it is self luminous it is not nothing it is everything sarvam khalvidam brahma brahmarpanam brahmaharihi brahma brahmanotam that is bhagavad gita everything in the world is brahman because it is coming from there in in, in next upanishad after 3 weeks we'll be doing this upanishad kaivalya upanishad mayeva sakalam jatam at that time you should remember the 11th section mm. and say yes 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 now i understand because i have done the adhyasa bhashyam i know this so easy now when i take the vakaivalya upanishad all of you who have attended the adhyasa bhashyam you it will the entire upanishadic study of the next maybe 15 months or so you will find it very easy i'm sure you will enjoy it because you have got the fundamental clear hmm. any other yes, question thank you yes for human being so we sometimes take birth of animals and all that recycle yes. then become to human being you know it is possible if you do not have this knowledge then shastra says you will take another body there is no doubt about it hmm. can self knowledge make us free from all physical and mental suffering no self knowledge is meant to know i am ever free atma nitya mukta atma suffering sorrow in life is at a lower level at a vyavaharika level both physical and mental we can transcend the suffering by self knowledge that is a right statement priti has said the right statement we cannot avoid by self knowledge we cannot avoid but we can transcend avoid means what i the body will still go through the whether i have some disease uh you know some people have problems with the heart some have lung some have kidney some have this so that will be there you cannot stop it that is cosmic law mental suffering if you have come to vedanta you should say suffering is always mental it can be physical it can be mental but it is not me the suffering is there at the mind level but i am beyond the mind i am the witness of the mind even in the death bed <clears throat> the jnani knows very well because he has the brahma bhava he doesn't have the jiva bhava like you and me you and me have attached to the body we feel i am a jiva i am a, i am a, i am i am a karta bhokta i am a doer i have to come out of this identification and slowly you will find that this brahma bhava becomes very predominant ah every time i am thinking i am a pure soul i am a pure soul will it happen i am telling you it is guaranteed shankaracharya guarantees it's a shastra the scriptures they guarantee study the upanishads you are a free person so let us continue our study and let us change transform from jiva bhava to brahma bhava i am the pure consciousness that is the truth let that knowledge come and sink as a permanent knowledge in me then i am never born i was never born because birth is at a lower level like the dream as a waker you know dream is at a lower level it appears disappears appears disappears 
how many dreams you have had each one of you just remember how many dreams you have had since you you are 5 years old 10 years old 12 years old 15 years old 30 years old 50 year old 60 year old so many dreams have come has any one of it remained with you ever <laughs> gone same thing is in in the waking also what work has yesterday what happened has it remained no gone this class is over finished 7:40 <laughs> again see this is this is how do you explain how do you explain this shastra is very clear the scriptures tell me that this is whole thing you keep on talking about suffering 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 how do i get free from suffering keeping this knowledge of self the best way tulsidas is let this knowledge sink more let this become your mantra for day to day living i am the pure atma i am the pure atma if that repeats more and more that will relieve your suffering both physical and mental keep thinking in the uh, in the at the junior level we say keep thinking of the parmatma when you are a senior student we say keep thinking about your own self that parmatma which the scriptures are talking it is there in this body it is there i have to only close my eyes it is there the scriptures will tell me how to see it wait till the upanishads teach you each one of us there is a methodology tatva masi this is the way you close your eyes be with yourself it is the light the pure light in which you see all your thoughts are coming and going all suffering is because of a thought in the mind i am suffering is a thought is a vritti and it is the consciousness which illumines this the more you study the more you will remember the light in which the thoughts are coming and going initially the thoughts are like you see the stars in the in the night they all are bright because you are in ignorance the thoughts become very prominent for you i am suffering i am doing this i said i suffered this i've got this problem i've got that problem i've got a problem in my business i've got a problem in my family and i have got problem in my own body all these problems they dominate till you have the knowledge of the scriptures till you have the knowledge of atma the moment that knowledge of the atma comes your mind suddenly will say why am i looking at a at a thought when i should be looking at the illuminator the light that light is revealed by the by the upanishads to me to all of us we all will remember that this is the light which i should hold on it is swayam jyoti it is self effulgent there is no nothing there is no light which illumines this light of consciousness the more knowledge of the self you develop the more that uh feelings of sufferings will become less and less and you will feel it not others only you yourself will feel it because you yourself will say i have studied the scriptures now i was very very uh, i was suffering a lot before the study in the last two years i find that i am more much more stable many many people have come here i have been teaching for the last 10 years now almost 8 10 years so many people have come and said i have changed what changed i don't know but it is the scriptures okay
Anybody else? Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you, Shekhar Ji. Hari Om. Hari Om. Thank you. Thank you, Tulsi Das. Hari Om, Shekhar Ji. Okay. Any other questions? Hari Om, Shekhar Ji. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, uh, Bhat. Yeah. Uh, good evening, and Hari Om. And first of all, uh, uh, one thing is that this whole uh, uh, the jnanam is just a cognitive change or there is a cognitive process. Right? Yes. So it has nothing to do with Vavagara. So, so a person who is a jnani or a jnani, both of them may be doing the Vavagara and you, there is no way we can identify whether he is a jnani or a agnani by looking at their uh, vivakara or whatever they are doing it, right? But then in your subject, what you taught today, the last portion it says that whoever is doing vivakara is a agnani. So why does, you know, uh, 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 Adi Shankara, Brand team, you know, those who are doing a Vivakara is a Ajnani. Good question, very good question. Uh, it's this is a very deep question. Um, you see, this is this is why in the, in section nine itself, the the, the Purva Pakshi comes. Uh, Shankaracharya himself says, "How can you say the whole Vivakara is is in in ignorance?" That means even a jnani is ignorant. Is that what you are saying? That is the same question you are asking, which it is there in the section 9, 10. Hmm. Now, you see, the way we should understand is this. You and I, when we see a jnani, we will see him acting in the same way because he is a human being. I am a human being. Hmm. This section number 12, Shankaracharya says all human beings will be acting in the same way because pramata, pramanam, prameyam activity is the entire vyavara. Whether it is in the animals, whether it is in the human, whether it is a jnani, whether it is a rajjani, it is the same. You will see it as same. Mm -hmm. The difference between a jnani and an ajnani, only a jnani will know. Mm -hmm. A jnani who has gone through the scriptures, for him, that ignorance is gone. Hmm. The darkness in his intellect is gone forever. Hmm. So he, when he acts, the way he will see the body is, it is not I am acting. He will say this body is acting. This body is eating. This body is teaching. A Swamiji who is taking 10 classes every week, he will not have an ego. I am taking 10 classes. I have got a thousand students who are listening to me every day. That ego is not there. He is saying, body's prarabdha is to teach. It is teaching something and there are students available. It is not me because I am ever muktaha. Muktaha means I am free from the body. You see, that one notion, I notion is gone. Hmm. Therefore, you, you know, our eyes will pratyaksha, all our eyes will only see the jnani acting. For example, some of the Swamiji's, they sit in samadhi. They sit, they don't come near Vyavahara. There are some Swamiji's who go after building schools and hospitals and uh, ashrams and there are... What the Jnani will say is, this is the prarabdha of that body, therefore it is building schools. It is building ashrams. It is running an ashram. But I am not, and so much so, Swami Chinmayananda used to say, this body is acting, this body is eating. Many people you, you might find also saying, uh, sannyasis will say, this body is eating. I am not eating. This body has traveled. I am not traveled. So they are, they are very far. They, even in their vocabulary, some of the Swamiji's, they do that. Hmm. 
So basically, uh, looking at them in, in, in a very advanced tech, these, these questions are all beautifully analyzed. They are all, they are all topics of the advanced texts like Vichara Sagara. They're all topics there. These are all questions in that. There it says that it is called as, uh, it is called as Adhyasa. It is, it is called as uh, uh, Abhasa Karma. It is not Karma, but it is Abhasa Karma, Pseudo Karma. Jnani does Pseudo Karma. Hmm. For it is a false action which is doing. In this body, there is no doership at all. Zero doership, but you will not know it because you, you don't see the internal cog cognitive process. So this ignorance is what removes that, that I notion. See, what happens, uh, but is that once, okay, now this you have done the Dhyasa Bhashya. So you have some idea that something should happen in my mind. Hmm. Okay, now I don't know what's going to happen, but this, I believe the scriptures, the scriptures tell me you go through this process, something will happen in your mind. Mm -hmm. So what we all have to do is, okay, let me study this, let me start the scriptures, let me start the Upanishads, let me read the, uh, let me uh, go through the Brahma Sutras, let me go through them, let the scriptures go through my intellect. Mm -hmm. When, I, when this scripture goes through this intellect, the result is the destruction of the I notion cognitively. It happens. Mm -hmm. Let it go through. That's all. That is how as, as, uh, as seekers, we proceed with our spiritual journey. Let me see. I don't, I see, I don't, I can, I, my intellect cannot judge that powerful scriptures. It, scriptures are very, very, it is supposed to be uh, given by Bhagwan himself, the creator himself. Mm -hmm. As a student, I, let, I say, let the scriptures go through me, uh, through me, my intellect. Whatever it has to do, let it do. Okay? Yep, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we'll stop here. Any other, uh, any other questions? So we will continue the next section next week. And uh, like I said, within three, four, uh, three, four weeks, we'll finish this Adhya Sabash. Yeah. And then we'll start, we'll continue with our, uh, with, your, with our study of the Upanishads. Very beautiful period is coming up where whatever we have learned in the Adhya Sabash, we will apply. Mr. Mr. Shekhar. Yes. Mr. Shekhar, I have a question. Yeah, tell me, Jacqueline. I'm manifested. <laughs> uh, I'm manifested, okay? Yeah. So, uh, I just... Uh, silence is equal to I'm manifested. Is that the same? Yes, it's right. See, silence means unmanifest and sound means manifest. So the unmanifest nature of sound is called as silence. There cannot be sound without silence. But the, see, the knower of the sound and silence is me, the Atma, the pure consciousness. So don't, stop, don't stop with the sound Om. Don't stop with the silent Om. Know that you are the witness to both the sound Om and the silence Om. Ah. So, uh, in fact, I wanted to ask the next question. So, in fact, the pure consciousness is not the unmanifest one. Yes, that is exactly. Before you could ask this question, I, I gave you the reply. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so Manifest and unmanifest are the two conditions of the mind, body, world. Atma does not have two conditions. It is unconditional. Un 
there is no uh, status for atma whereas the body mind and the world have got two statuses manifest state in the waking and dream unmanifest state in the sleep state atma is the witness to the manifest state of the mind body and the world atma is the witness to the unmanifest state of the body mind and the world okay okay you have to reach the the witness of both the light and darkness go beyond light go beyond darkness and no i am the witness of light and darkness ah okay okay and uh like what i always ask you uh, the experience that we have since we were born until whatever age you are it is it is not karma it is something that is inevitable that we have to go through that process until the day that we go to heaven yes you are right Uh, it's inevitable it is a sh- it is an arrow which has been shot you cannot stop the arrow which has been shot it will reach the target and it will fall we just have to go through that process yes we have to go through the process of life very patiently and accept life as it comes tomorrow every day is a new life every experience is a new experience for the jiva but the jiva who comes to know i am never the experienced body or mind or the world i am ever the experiencer consciousness yeah because the mind is the culprit okay and yes the-, the mind is the culprit drop the mind the mind is called as maya it's called as sh- the maya shakti it 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 puts me into a cycle which i cannot stop yeah i think yeah <laughs> yes just yes, yes. Uh, uh, uh can you elaborate uh yani again yani yani j a n n i yeah yani means he is a wise person who knows that i am the atma i am not the body i am not the mind he is a wise person who has removed the ignorance in his intellect Oh so if i say i am a yani i am like that am i right that's correct if you are a, if you say i am a yani means I, my ignorance is gone i am a free person oh okay okay i thought yani is equal to soul okay okay uh, yeah i uh, appreciate that you have uh, just said oh okay uh, yeah okay appreciate have a uh, yeah thank you thank you thank you jacqueline tremendous improvement in your knowledge i can see you such uh a serious questions coming from you after 3 years i am moving into the uh, what is my life who am i that's where i'm coming from <laughs> okay thank you thank you thank you jackie thank okay. you appreciate okay good night i have a good sunday good night. okay good thank everybody. you and good night to everybody yep good night good night thank you hari ho hari ho thank you hari ho hari ho Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Uma. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.